Astrophysicists are in perpetual search of answers and try to understand the functioning of the universe, which abounds in celestial objects, often enigmatic, but so extraordinary. If luminous stars have long monopolized researchers and astronomy enthusiasts, today they are far from being the only ones to occupy the minds of the curious. Black holes are probably the most fascinating objects in the cosmos, as much for their strangeness as for their devastating capacities. Recently discovered, the concept of their probable existence only dates back to the end of the 18th century. At that time, Within the framework of Isaac Newton's universal gravitation, a new question arose. Are there objects whose mass is sufficiently large that their escape velocity is greater than the speed of light? In other words, are there invisible stars? Then, at the beginning of the 20th century, Albert Einstein's work on general relativity, also known as the theory of gravity, transform this mathematical curiosity into a definite interest for astrophysicists. But it is in the 60s, thanks to astronomical observation, coupled with x-rays, that the first proofs of the existence of black holes could be brought. Dear Traveler, Good morning. Today we will discover these gravity wells often compared to cosmic monsters, we will meet black holes from the largest to the most unusual. But before leaving for a new adventure, think of liking the video and subscribing to the channel to not miss anything. Thank you, and have a nice trip! We are now going to start our interstellar journey. I advise you to fasten your seatbelt. Well, because we are going to cover unimaginable distances in a ridiculous time. But before we leave our solar system, let's tear ourselves away from our beautiful planet Earth and head for Mars. Half the size of Earth, it is easy to recognize by its red color. As we fly over it, you can see the ice caps that cover its two poles. Observe its rocky and deserted surface, dotted with deep gorges, but also with numerous volcanoes, some of which are truly impressive in size. If it evolves in the habitable zone of the Sun, unfortunately, its mass and its relatively weak size will probably never have allowed life to develop there, at least not for long. Let's not linger too long in the environment of Mars, because two moons orbit around it at only 9,400 and 23,500 kilometers of the distance, or 5,800 or 14,600 miles. Small in size, measuring respectively 27 kilometers or 17 miles and 15 kilometers or 9 miles, they could surprise us especially since they are both black as coal. Our trajectory inevitably leads us in the direction of the asteroid belt that separates Mars from Jupiter. We have to cross this unusual boundary, which is littered with obstacles, marking the border between the inner and outer solar system. Hundreds of thousands of objects orbit in this zone, if most of them are small, even insignificant in the form of dust, nearly 800,000 of them measure a few tens of meters or feet to several hundred kilometers or miles. The largest belong to the class of planetoids. You can recognize Vesta, which is roughly spherical, with flattened poles and an equator that seems to have large gashes in it, comparable to those in the Grand Canyon. The surface of the asteroid 
also bears the multicolored scars of numerous impacts. Depending on their violence, but also on the nature of the object involved, the stigmata display different colors due to various chemical compositions. Let's now observe Pallas, an asteroid whose orbit is inclined. It is relatively spherical in shape, and its surface is riddled with small craters, giving it the appearance of a golf ball. It is also the object of the belt which presents the most impacts on its surface. Unlike all other asteroids, Pallas has a unique orbit. It must therefore make its way through the many other objects that evolve in the same flow. This asteroid consequently undergoes collisions more important than its companions, both in frequency and intensity. Vesta and Pallas, which have a diameter of a little more than 500 kilometers, or 310 miles, are to date the two largest known asteroids of the main belt. However, they have only occupied the first place for a few years because Ceres, with its 950 kilometers, or 590 miles, was until then the star. Ceres still orbits in the heart of the main belt. It has not disappeared. But since 2006, it has been integrated by the International Astronomical Union to the family of dwarf planets because of its spherical shape. In spite of the asteroid belt, our journey is going smoothly because we can take advantage of the Kirkwood gaps, those areas almost devoid of objects, to make our crossing as serenely as possible. Let's leave this rocky region. Our progression now leads us to the approaches of the imposing gaseous planet Jupiter the largest and heaviest celestial body of our solar system, after the Sun. Its important mass and gravity confer it the quality of guardian of the system. Indeed, these characteristics allow it to attract comets and asteroids to it. It acts as a shield, preventing these objects from crashing into the inner planets, such as the Earth. But let's not change our trajectory and continue our progress. We are approaching Saturn. You have, of course, identified it from afar, thanks to its rings. But look closer. Have you ever noticed this geometric shape on the North Pole? Like a gemstone embedded in the center of a jewel, a gigantic hexagonal storm, measuring more than 32,000 kilometers, or 20,000 miles in diameter, crowns this planet. Formed by the clouds of the troposphere, this shape, which seems to be drawn with a chalk line, is the consequence of jet streams which blow at more than 320 kilometers per hour, that is to say 200 miles per hour, thus drawing each of its six faces. Let's leave this fantastic cyclone far behind us and go to the limits of the solar system, in the direction of two ice giants. We first cross Uranus, which is easily recognizable by its atypical behavior. Its inclination of about 90 degrees with respect to the plane of its orbit gives the impression that it rolls like a ball around the sun. Our journey continues with a flight over the eighth and last planet of the solar system, Neptune. This planet, with its azure blue hues, is far from the tranquility of a clear sky. It is whipped by supersonic winds that can exceed 2,000 kilometers per hour, or 1,242 miles per hour. Let's not linger near this giant that suffers from the apocalyptic climate and dive into the immense Kuiper Belt, located between 30 and 55 astronomical units from our Sun. This immense zone extends over several hundred million kilometers or miles and contains hundreds of thousands of celestial objects. Several dwarf planets also orbit in the heart of this structure, which is one of the largest in our solar system. 
If some of these objects may have been recently caught by the belt's gravitation, the majority of them are pieces of rock and ice. They are probably residues of the formation of planets, which would have been ejected in this distant region because of the interactions undergone by the four giants that we have just crossed. As you have seen, no black hole has crossed our path, at least not formally, and for good reason. To date, no such structure has been detected in this region of space. But exactly, what is a black hole? A black hole is a region of space where the gravitational pull is so strong that no matter or radiation can escape, not even light, even though it is the fastest thing in the universe. This strong gravity is induced when matter has been compressed into a tiny space. Considered nevertheless as a celestial object, a black hole can neither emit nor diffuse light. A black hole is therefore invisible. Knowing that they absorb all the light in their invisible center, you may wonder how the existence of black holes could be confirmed. If they are invisible directly, the use of indirect observation techniques in different wavelengths allows to detect their presence. Indeed, if we are not yet able to describe the central region of a black hole because of its gravitational singularity, we can study the physical conditions of its immediate vicinity and its influence on its environment. This is why only three parameters can be described. These are the mass, the electric charge, and the angular momentum. As black holes are not visible, these parameters allow astronomers to detect their presence by the effect they produce on objects that come too close. For example, a star can see its trajectory influenced by the presence of a black hole around which it orbits. Similarly, when a star and a black hole are in close orbits, scientific instruments can identify a high-energy light that is then produced. If the gravity of the black hole is strong enough, it can extract the outer gas from the star in question and form an accretion disk. This disk spirals around the black hole, releasing X-rays in all directions. Another phenomenon can be seen when matter falls into such a cosmic hole. This matter will overheat, just like the gas of a nearby star, and emit strong X-rays, which can consequently also be detected by scientists. A question is certainly on your mind. If black holes are invisible, can we still describe them? The answer is yes. On the one hand, Scientists have been able to study them, thanks to the previously described techniques. But moreover, an image has been shown around the world in 2019. The international team of the Event Horizon Telescope was unveiled, after two years of data processing and more than 10 years of work, the first ever photo of a black hole. It is the picture, made with very long baseline interferometry of the supermassive black hole M87, nestled in the heart of the galaxy M87, located 55 million light years from Earth. We can discover a black disk surrounded by a ring of light, corresponding to the shadow of this colossal object. Its mass is equivalent to 6.5 billion solar masses, and the diameter of its event horizon is estimated at 254 astronomical units, that is, 254 times the distance to the Earth and the Sun. But let's take a closer look at this strange object in order to reveal its structure. 
a black hole is composed of an external event horizon, a second internal event horizon, and its singularity. The event horizon marks the limit around the mouth of the black hole. As soon as a particle enters this horizon line, it is trapped and doomed to disappear. Gravity is constant in this zone, whatever the distance. However, it happens that matter, attracted by the black hole, ricochets on the event horizon. It is then projected outwards, accompanied by a shower of light jets of matter. The singularity represents the inner region of the black hole. This is where the overwhelming mass of the object remains. The singularity is completely hidden and corresponds to the unique point where the mass of the black hole is concentrated in space-time. But how can such a cosmic phenomenon occur? Scientists believe that some black holes, called primordial, appeared shortly after the Big Bang in the early universe. Supermassive black holes have been discovered in some galaxies, which also suggest that they were created at the same time as their host galaxy. Another category of black holes could be the result of the death of a massive star when it collapses on itself, causing a supernova. If a black hole occupies zero space, it has a very large mass. This mass represents the major part of the mass that was once that of a star. Of course, as gluttons, black holes become more and more massive as they gobble up the surrounding matter. The zone of no return, i.e. the event horizon, gradually grows with the black hole. The existence of black holes in the universe can lead to another reflection. If they absorb everything in their path, can they represent a real danger? But first of all, are there many of them, or are they quite rare anomalies? Since black holes are difficult to detect, since they are as black as the space in which they are located, only theoretical calculations can establish an estimate of their number. According to some researchers, there could be millions of small black holes not yet detected in our interstellar neighborhood. They rely on modeling the evolution of galaxies over the billions of years that have already passed. Based on the numerous observations and statistics established, on the evolution of galaxies, they were able to determine demographic trends. Some galaxies are true nurseries of stars, while others seem to have exhausted their reserves and no longer produce anything of note. By also taking into account the metallicity of a galaxy, i.e. the metal content inside it, they can similarly determine whether it is a good candidate for star production. Thanks to these building blocks, a model of the stellar population within galaxies allowed them to quantify the number of stars appearing in the universe by categories, small, medium, and large stars. Their evolution could then be estimated. The evolution of black holes has also been included in the scientists' calculations. Some can swallow a double system, taking advantages of these ingestions. Others, at the end of their life, continue to attract the surrounding gas. A merger between two black holes is another possibility. All these parameters have allowed scientists to make an astronomical census of black holes. They found that in each cubic megaparsec of the universe, or 3.26 million cubic light years, there could be as many as 50 million solar masses of black holes. Insofar as a single black hole would have the mass of our Sun, this would correspond to about 50 million distinct black holes in this same space. In other words, black holes could be frighteningly common in the universe. Are you ready to get close to one of these black holes?
Do you know which black hole is closest to Earth? Unicorn. This is the name given to the tiny black hole closest to Earth that resides in the constellation Monoceros, more commonly known as the Unicorn. It has been spotted only recently, in 2021, only 1,500 light years away. On the scale of the cosmos, it is located two steps from our beautiful planet. But traveling at the speed of light, it would take us no less than 1,500 years to reach it. It has a mass equivalent to three times that of our Sun. In comparison, the black hole at the heart of our Milky Way contains 4.3 million solar masses. Its discovery, which cannot be due to its size, ridiculously small for a black hole, was made by the observation of a red giant star that evolves alongside it. The latter, which is approaching the end of its life, is subject to an invisible gravitational force that causes a slight distortion of its light, as well as very slight variations in its speed. Detecting such a structure is almost impossible, because the smaller the black hole, the weaker its impact on neighboring structures. What makes this black hole particularly intriguing is that it appears extremely light for such a cosmic object. Indeed, for scientists, black holes could not have a mass less than five solar masses, which calls into question their theory, while opening new and fascinating perspectives to finally hope to understand the mechanisms that govern the formation of neutron stars and black holes on the other hand, black hole hunters focus their attention on binary systems. Although these objects are extremely discrete, they could well be much more numerous than one would think. They are convinced that this small black hole called Unicorn could be the first of many, an estimate that between 100 and 1,000 could be detected in our own galaxy alone. Among these numerous objects, some are more visible than others and therefore more easily detectable. However, a dark and isolated black hole was discovered fortuitously by scientists using the gravitational microlensing technique while observing a much more distant star. The peculiarity of this object, detected in 2011, is that it seems to drift alone in interstellar space like a castaway in space, far from any host galaxy, but especially without a larder nearby. Like an orphan, it is distant from our solar system by about 5,153 light years in the direction of the galactic bulge in the constellation Sagittarius. This black hole, named OB 110462, has been studied with the Hubble telescope. Its mass is estimated at 7.1 times that of the Sun, and its speed at nearly 45 kilometers per second, that is to say, more than 28 miles per second. For the scientific community, this isolated stellar black hole, whose age is estimated at 100 million years, could be the first of a long list. The death of large stars leaves room for black holes, there must be hundreds of millions of them scattered in our galaxy. Their observation finally possible by the gravitational microlensing technique opens new opportunities to finally detect these dark and compact objects that probably populate the Milky Way. And who knows, maybe one day soon, one of these invisible black holes will turn out to be a primordial black hole, giving us secrets about the period of the famous Big Bang. Let's continue our journey and head for the constellation of Cygnus, which has a stellar black hole, the first to have been discovered using X-ray detectors. Distant from our solar system by 7,237 light years, it was the first candidate 
as a black hole. It is part of a high-mass binary system that was identified in 1965. Its companion, a blue supergiant, is a variable star with a mass of about 25 solar masses. This star, probably 5 million years old, is oscillating under the gravitational attraction of the black hole Cygnus X1, which has a mass of about 20 times that of the Sun for only 120 kilometers or 75 miles in diameter. These two objects orbit each other very quickly. Indeed, their period of revolution lasts only five and a half days. Cygnus X1 rotates faster than any other object of the same nature examined to date. Its speed is close to that of light. Thus, this stellar black hole evolves at a frantic speed next to a companion which is slowly disintegrating at its side under the effect of its gravitational attraction, offering it, in spite of itself, its cosmic dust as a meal. This devoured matter provokes important jets of matter, classifying this black hole in the category of quasars. But how did it form? The absence of a residual nebula in the black hole's surroundings, which has been studied for a long time, allows scientists to consider that it appeared as a result of a simple gravitational collapse of a supernova star, but without explosion. You probably think that black holes are all alike, but you are wrong. While it's true that they generally have common characteristics, one black hole alone defies scientists' understanding of how they form. Let's go and discover Maxi J 1820 plus 070, an atypical black hole of our Milky Way, located at about 10,000 light years from the Earth, in the constellation of the Serpentaire, Opiochus. This stellar black hole has a mass of about eight times the mass of the Sun. It is slowly but surely stripping away its close companion, a white dwarf, whose mass is equivalent to half a sun. As with other black holes, the matter that is not engulfed is expelled into the cosmos in the form of jets. However, when you see it in your line of sight, you immediately notice that it is not like its cousins. This cosmic object is distinguished from other black holes by a misalignment between its axes of rotation. Indeed, a binary system of this type, with a star orbiting a black hole, should present, in the absence of extrinsic perturbations, axes of rotation aligned with each other, and especially perpendicular to the orbital plane. However, as you can see by looking closely at this structure, it is not so. The inclination of the black hole and its orbit have completely different axes. The axis of rotation of the black hole is tilted by more than 40 degrees with respect to the axis of the orbital plane of this binary system, making it unique in its kind. The trajectory of the double jet of hot matter thus appears strongly misaligned with respect to the axis of rotation of its orbit. For the researchers, this strong misalignment was probably shaped at the formation of the black hole, even before the system had time to straighten up. A supernova, the giant explosion of a star at the end of its life, which was at the origin of this black hole, will probably have caused this asymmetry under the impact of its incredible violence. Maxi J 1820 plus 070 is also known to the scientific community for having captured one of its countless explosions on video in 2018 at NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. The video allows for a time lapse or video animation of one of its eruptions, but also allows for the study of the velocity of hot material expelled into space by the black hole within its pair of opposing jets. 
The first findings noted speeds of the order of 60% of the speed of light for the North Pole and 160% of the speed of light for the South Pole. But what is really the case? In fact, the real speed of the rejected particles is about 80% of the speed of light, which represents a speed close to 863 million kilometers per hour, or more than 536 million miles per hour. The first findings were truncated by the illusion of transluminal velocities that occurs when the jets of the black hole are almost parallel to the direction of the observers based on our planet Earth. This black hole is a perfect example of this, as its jet emitted at the South Pole is approaching the Earth, while the one at the North Pole is moving away from it. Do you see these two powerful and condensed jets? To give you an idea of the amount of matter being ejected, astrophysicists have estimated that it is about 500 million times the mass of the Empire State Building in just a few hours this fantastic amount of matter produces real shock waves before slowing down as it enters the interstellar medium. But let's not get too close to this structure. If we know the risks of crossing the accretion disk of a black hole, we cannot yet predict the eruptions followed by the emission of jets of matter. Even a small black hole remains an endless sink that never gives back what it has made disappear. Let's see now, what are the particularities of low-mass black holes, in other words, stellar black holes? I propose that we go to a binary system in our Milky Way, known as XTE J1650-500, which could have housed the smallest black hole ever detected. To do this, we must reach Aura, a constellation in the southern hemisphere that borders Scorpio. Located more than 10,000 light years away, this binary system was spotted in 2001 by NASA's Rossi X-ray Timing Explorer satellite and seems to have a stellar black hole at its heart whose mass is particularly light for this type of object. Initially estimated at 3.8 times the mass of our Sun, the mass of this structure, which measures only 24 kilometers or 15 miles in diameter, has finally been revised upwards. It would actually be between 5 and 10 solar masses. But stay on your guard. This structure as small as it is compared to its companions could attract you and under its gravitational force you could still end up in Astro Spaghetti. Another candidate black hole is potentially the lightest of all. It is IGR J17091, a stellar mass black hole located in the constellation of Scorpio. 28,000 light years from our solar system. Discovered by the Integral Satellite of the European Space Agency, it would have a mass between 3 and 10 times that of the Sun, making it a small cosmic monster, and that is an understatement. Winds of formidable intensity have been observed in the disk surrounding this black hole, reaching nearly 3% of the speed of light. Its winds are as violent as those that can be measured in structures, such as supermassive black holes, which are up to billions of times heavier. Moreover, the winds of IGR J17091, which originate from the gas disks surrounding the black hole, have revealed to have a very unexpected feature. It seems that they are able to carry away much more cosmic material than the black hole captures. So you can imagine that these winds take in gas from the adjacent star before the black hole blows it away forever, then expels it into the cosmos. 
In reality, it turns out that the champion of the lightweights is the unicorn black hole, which also has the distinction of being the closest black hole to our Earth to date, as we found at the beginning of our expedition. I propose to continue our journey in the heart of our galaxy. Let's go and discover the star Sagittarius A. As its name indicates, the black hole Sagittarius A is located in the constellation of Sagittarius, 26,673 light years from the solar system, more precisely, in the heart of the Milky Way. This area of space, named Sagittarius A, has been suspected of hosting a black hole since the 1930s, but it was in 1974 at the Green Bank Observatory in West Virginia, with the help of one of the largest steerable radio telescopes in the world, that it was actually identified. If at that time, this compact radio source was revealed, it was in the 1980s that astronomers began to hypothesize that the central compact object was probably a black hole, whose size seemed implausible. After studying the stars near this intriguing source of radio waves for a decade, they found that they seemed to swirl around a dark object, evolving in the heart of the Milky Way. From their movements, they then assumed that a black hole of four million times the mass of the Sun was interfering with them. Subsequently, other assumptions were discarded, including the presence of many stars very closely grouped. It was in 2017 that evidence of a supermassive black hole was provided through the Event Horizon Telescope, a multinational research project which produced a resolved image of the accretion disk all around. This image, which is the second in astronomical history for this type of object, confirms that Sagittarius A is a black hole with a mass of more than 4 million solar masses. This finding corresponds exactly to the predictions of Einstein's theory of general relativity and provides valuable clues about the functioning of black holes and de facto galaxies. You can imagine how difficult it was to expose this dark object, drowned in a bright orange halo so much it is masked by the gases that surround it. These extend between 5 and 30 light years and occasionally offer it a little energy to devour, causing faint X-ray flashes. Temperatures in the accretion disk can reach up to 10 million degrees Celsius, or more than 18 million degrees Fahrenheit. Take a moment to contemplate Sagittarius A and realize that the entire Milky Way, more than 13.6 billion years old, orbits around it. Relatively discreet and not very active, this supermassive black hole that shaped our galaxy still holds many secrets. It is true that black holes are considered to be silent cosmic monsters only impacting the too curious matter that travels alongside them. However, one of them turns out to be threatening far beyond its event horizon. If you want to know more, we must approach another binary system, composed of a regular lambda star and a black hole, located near the constellation of Scorpio, about 28,000 light years from our solar system. Let's get to this intriguing object, named H1743-322, without further ado. I won't keep you waiting any longer, and will now reveal what makes this black hole so different from its peers. It turns out that it shoots bullets. Two balls of high-energy material were ejected into space by this little black hole in 2009 as if it were expelling bulky burps from its poles during a difficult digestion. Moreover, studies conducted so far 
have shown that it seems to feast without restraint every eight months, swallowing a large amount of matter that is drawn into its secretion disk that reaches millions of kilometers in diameter. This periodicity is evidenced by the measurement of cyclic variations of X-rays called quasi-periodic oscillations. A black hole firing ultra-fast gas bullets into the cosmos, reaching a quarter of the speed of light, or about 270 million kilometers per hour, or 170 million miles per hour, is a most surprising phenomenon. But what makes it even more curious is that these radio spots, which accompany the usual particle jets, occur at a time when radio explosions are not yet observed. How do scientists explain this phenomenon? For the moment, none of them has an answer, and theories are intermingled. But what is certain is that the accretion disk and the launch of jets are related to this cosmic strangeness. But let's not stay too long in this somewhat uncertain environment and prefer a less explosive destination. I now propose that we resume our journey. Let's teleport to another area of the universe in the constellation of the Big Dipper, close to the Bode Nebulas, two galaxies so close that they were discovered at the same time. Let's take a look at one of these two neighboring galaxies, the one that harbors the rarest type of black hole known to date, the Cigar Galaxy, or Messier 82, distant from our Sun by only 12 million light years. This galaxy has two symmetrical bluish spiral arms that stretch around its core, where at least 197 young massive star clusters are evolving. Each of these clusters has a mass close to 200,000 solar masses and cohabits around a center that produces stars at a rate 10 times faster than that of the entire Milky Way. As a proof, this magnificent galaxy called Starburst, whose disk is five times more luminous than that of the Milky Way, has a center which is hundreds of times more luminous than that of our galaxy. The diameter of its central region, which is very active in star formation, is about 500 parsecs, or more than 1,630 light years. There are four beautiful star clusters in this region, where significant X-rays are detected. Look closely. We may be witnessing a supernova, which seems to be legion in this busy area. As expected, a supermassive black hole is located in the center of this galaxy. The mass of the latter is estimated at 30 million solar masses. So the object, there is no longer any doubt. It is indeed a second black hole, named M82X1, in reference to its host. Its mass is estimated to be between 400 and 500 times that of our Sun. It seems that a giant star, or even a This discovery is significant because it confirms, after many years of research, the existence of medium-sized black holes. The presence of black holes of intermediate size, lighter than supermassive black holes, which are much more frequent in most galaxies, should allow us in the future to understand how they work. An intermediate black hole is thus larger than those resulting from the collapse of a single star, but remains much smaller than supermassive black holes, which are millions of times heavier than the Sun. As in any precept, there is always an exception that confirms the rule. Black holes are no exception to this rule. Considered as cosmic vacuum cleaners, they are used to make any matter or light that comes dangerously close to their accretion disk disappear permanently. However, a black hole comes to disturb this concept. Located in the constellation of Compass, a little more than 34 million light years away, 
in a dwarf galaxy named Henes 210, an actively growing supermassive black hole of about one million solar masses is upsetting this stereotype. How? Let's just say that instead of tearing stars apart and causing them to gradually disappear into its bowels, it instead promotes their formation. Indeed, young stars form in this galaxy at a prodigious speed, giving large clusters of blue-tinted stars that you could admire. In the center of these star nurseries, which sparkle with a thousand lights, we can distinguish in a bright region the massive black hole, surrounded by pink clouds and dark dust bands. But let's get a little closer to this strange object and try to understand its structure. In the near suburbs of this black hole, at a distance of only 230 light years, a region of star formation stands out. The black hole seems to be connected to this star cluster by a continuous flow of gas, which, like an umbilical cord, comes to feed this region of space, very bright. This black hole does not eject material into space at extreme speeds, but offers a gentle flow whose speed is only about 1.6 million kilometers per hour, or 600,000 miles per hour. Thus it allows the captured and then compressed gases to be precipitated at less intense temperatures, allowing them to form new stars in even denser clusters. As you have just seen, although black holes have many similarities, some are distinguished from their fellow black holes by atypical characteristics. This is also the case of a supermassive black hole located in the supergiant elliptical galaxy, Messier 87. To go to meet it, we must go to the constellation of Virgo, more precisely, in the Virgo cluster, which contains many galaxies, including Messier 87, which is the largest of all. This one is about 53 million light years away from our solar system and extends over 120,000 light years. It is therefore slightly larger than the Milky Way. However, while the Milky Way is accompanied by about 200 star clusters, Messier 87 has an incredible number. This galaxy evolves in the company of approximately 12,000 globular star clusters. The star M87 is a supermassive black hole that has been the subject of numerous observations for a number of years. A shot from the Event Horizon Telescope immortalized it in 2019, supporting its fame and confirming that it is indeed the black hole with one of the highest masses of all supermassive black holes. Indeed, its mass is about 6.5 billion times that of our Sun. This black hole is 55 million light years away from our solar system, but its particularity is that it emits a vast jet of relativistic matter that propagates over 5,000 light years in the cosmos. The latest observations by Chandra X-ray astronomers have noted that some sections of this plasma jet are moving at a speed never before seen. It is the first time that such a speed is observed in the jet of a black hole. But what can this jet correspond to? Isn't a black hole supposed to swallow everything that comes its way? In fact, it is not so simple. Although the black hole attracts matter to the center of the galaxy, it is not completely swallowed. The matter, approaching the black hole, starts to turn in the accretion disk. Only a small amount is absorbed by the black hole. The remaining matter is expelled into space in the form of a jet or a beam, whose path is linked to the magnetic field lines. These jets, which are far from being smooth, are rather in the form of knots. By studying their behavior over several years, 
astronomers have been able to deduce that they move at extraordinary speeds, up to 6.3 times the speed of light. Yes, you heard right, 6.3 times the speed of light. How is this possible? Nothing can move faster than the universal speed limit. In fact, the star M87 did not break the laws of physics because it does not expel matter at a speed greater than the speed of light. Scientists have demonstrated that this is in fact an amazing phenomenon called superluminal motion. This movement occurs when objects move at a speed close to the speed of light in a direction similar to the line of sight of the observer. This is in fact what is happening with this black hole. However, the near cosmic speed experienced by the particles in the jets of the star Messier 87 is attested, reaching 99% of the speed of light. Black holes millions to billions of times the mass of the Sun exist at the center of almost all large galaxies. Like their host, they are inexorably bound to evolve and merge with each other. In order to witness this spectacle, as rare as it is spectacular, I now propose that you go and meet the vast Seifert Galaxy, located in the constellation of Hydra, 200 million light years from our Sun. NGC 3393 is a very dense barred spiral galaxy, which in addition to being considered remarkably active, has the particularity of hosting two supermassive black holes distant from each other by only 490 light years. One of the two black holes, monstrously large, is being devoured by its even larger counterpart. Their mass is at least one million times the mass of the Sun for the first and about 30 million solar masses for the second. The luminosity given off by their two quasars is such that scientists have long believed that this galaxy, well-ordered, had only a single black hole in its center. Imagine their surprise when they observe for the first time these two cosmic monsters side by side using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. This discovery makes it possible to affirm that there are several forms of fusion between galaxies when they collide. While researchers have long believed that direct collisions between galaxies, known as major mergers, lead to dramatic results with anarchic and chaotic rearrangements of their structures, they now have evidence that this type of event can also occur with less turbulence. NGC 3393 confirms that minor mergers can take place. Under its calm and imperturbable airs, this galactic bulb with two synchronized hearts is the proof. You are witnessing the end of an insidious merger between two galaxies of unequal masses whose spiral shape of the larger one remains impassive and regular. The smaller of the two black holes must have had less mass than its companion when their host galaxies began to merge about a billion years ago or more. Even if these two monsters cohabit harmoniously, devouring simultaneously the stars that come to them, the larger one, like a cannibal, undoubtedly nibbles its neighbor with incessant assiduity. Although this remains very complicated, new technologies now allow even more precise comparisons between black holes. If scientists have long thought that there were only two types of black holes, stellar and supermassive, it is now believed that there is a continuum and that there are also intermediate size. The latter should therefore have a mass between 100 and 10,000 solar masses. Their existence was predicted when very bright X-ray sources were found far from the center of some galaxies. 
where supermassive black holes are usually found. This was observed in 2006, when a strong X-ray flare from a source named 3XMM J2150 was observed by the Hubble telescope, but also in X-rays by the XMM Newton and Chandra Space Telescopes about 800,000 million light-years away in the constellation Aquarius. This observation was able to conclude that it was indeed the destruction of a star by a black hole, weighing more than 50,000 solar masses, hosted in a cluster of stars on the outskirts of a distant lenticular galaxy. In 2020, the Hubble Space Telescope had the opportunity to immortalize a new burst of X-rays in this same area, confirming that a black hole is indeed engulfing a star that is a bit too curious after having partially shredded it in a cataclysm of superheated gas and X-rays. If the existence of intermediate black holes has been proven by this technological prowess, on the other hand, it pushes scientists to question more and more. If they know that the mass of an intermediate black hole is between 100 and 10,000 times the solar mass, they do not understand how such a structure can form. No single star can give birth to such a heavy black hole. However, several hypotheses are emerging. One proposes that a single black hole, if it had enough matter to devour permanently, could reach such a weight. Another suggests that it could be several black holes that have merged. In any case, the formation of these objects remains one of the most interesting enigmas for high-energy astrophysicists. Black holes, like all cosmic objects, move through the cosmos at the pace of their host galaxy. If we know that some galaxies have undergone great upheavals by meeting, or even merging, with one of their many similar ones, what about black holes? What would happen if two of these cosmic behemoths cross paths a little too closely? After all, isn't it said that only mountains never meet? We will probably have the answer in a few short years thanks to a galaxy that is about a billion light years away from our solar system. This galaxy, known as SDSS J1430 plus 2303, appears to contain a pair of supermassive black holes with an overall mass of up to 200 million solar masses, whose behavior is very strange. Oscillations in the galactic nucleus observed for three years, have been found to be shorter and shorter, going from a period of about a year to a period of only one month. These fluctuations of light detected in the center of the galaxy allow scientists to consider that two black holes are rubbing shoulders in this area, but more importantly, that they should undergo an imminent collision within the next three years if this is the case, it will be the first time that a collision between two supermassive black holes can be observed. Scientists hope to see a huge explosion of light across the spectrum and expect to learn much more about how black holes work. But let's leave these two hellish spirals behind and take a step back. A premature collision, although it would offer us a wonderful spectacle, could be fatal. What if I took you to the brightest object in the early universe? Are you ready to reach, or almost reach, the edge of the universe, 12.8 billion light years away from our galaxy? Put on your sunglasses, you might need them, because we are about to approach a bright quasar whose light is equivalent to 600,000 billion times that of our Sun. Named J043947, this unique object shines right in the heart of a galaxy in formation during an early part of the universe's history, known 
as the epoch of reionization. The latter corresponds to the period when the universe was less than a billion years old, when the first stars and galaxies began to consume clouds of neutral hydrogen in the cosmos. This energetic core cohabits with a supermassive black hole that feeds voraciously on the dust and gas that surround it, producing increased luminosity due to the resulting heating. Very active, this quasar has an estimated star formation rate of 10,000 stars per year, which is enormous compared to our Milky Way, which produces only one star per year. The black hole does not simply absorb the diffuse gas of intergalactic space, Despite its intense luminosity, such an object might never have been observed by scientists because of its position at the edge of our universe. In fact, its discovery is largely due to the disposition of objects in the cosmos. It is a physical phenomenon, known as gravitational lensing, that allows us to locate it. According to Einstein's theory of general relativity, Powerful gravitational forces can bend the path of light. In our case, the light of the observed quasar is distorted by a faint galaxy, located halfway between the Earth and the quasar, which has no other effect than to increase its brightness by 50 times, but also to distort the space around it. This gravitational lens then bends the light, like an optical lens and divides the image of the quasar so that it can be seen in three different places simultaneously. Thanks to this magnification, astronomers are able to observe this cosmic monster more closely, even though it is very far away. A gigantic discovery was revealed by the scientific community in 2017. A supermassive black hole, more than 13 billion light years away from Earth, was detected by one of the telescopes in Chile in the far reaches of the universe. Named ULAS J13 42 08, this black hole is a monster that is 800 million times more massive than our Sun. It is the largest black hole ever detected in the depths of the universe. Its particularity? Its size, but especially its age of 13 billion years, which does not agree with the models currently used to describe the beginning of interactions between the first stars. This quasar beats all the records of precocity, with an immense size noted, whereas the universe was hardly at 5% of its current age. It is extremely far away, and unusually massive for its age, and thus poses a problem for astrophysicists. No object can be older than the universe itself. Light travels at a definite speed. Therefore, the more distant an object is, the older it is observed. This means that this black hole was observed as it was more than 13 billion years ago, when it was very young. The universe being 13 billion, 700 million years old, ULAS J13-42-08 is therefore less than 700 million years old. Although black holes are known to be voracious, they grow relatively slowly. A black hole in the best case doubles its mass in 40 million years, therefore to multiply its mass by 1,000, it takes 400 million years and 800 million years to multiply its mass by 1 million. However, ULAS J13-42-08 is less than 800 million years old. Therefore, it should be about 1 million times less massive than its detected mass, which is 800 million solar masses. The question is, how can such a young object be so big in the early universe? Two theories emerge. 
either the growth rate of black holes is underestimated, or, and this is the most likely explanation, much more massive black holes could have formed in the younger universe than today, following the explosion of a massive star. If this is the case, we can imagine that primordial stars, probably more massive than living longer, allowed the birth of much larger black holes during the youth of our universe. This type of quasar should reveal stages of the universe that are not yet known. Among the strangest black holes of the universe, we cannot ignore the largest of them. Phoenix A and Tun 618 are to date the two most massive black holes ever detected. But let's take a closer look at what we can learn from Phoenix A, the central galaxy of the massive Phoenix cluster of galaxies, located in the southern constellation of Phoenix, about 8.5 billion light years away. This galaxy has a star production 700 times higher than in the Milky Way, giving birth to 740 new stars every year. It is the most active galaxy ever discovered. But what makes it special is the black hole at its center. The latter is the largest black hole detected. The mass of this central black hole is estimated at 20 billion times that of our Sun. By itself, it represents nearly 10% of the mass of the entire Milky Way, and its event horizon has a diameter of 590 billion kilometers, or more than 366 billion miles. If we wanted to follow its perimeter, it would take us 71 days at the speed of light to go around it completely. Its colossal size cannot be explained by the collapse of a single star. This black hole, which deserves to be labeled as ultramassive, could in fact be the result of a collision between several supermassive black holes that were formed shortly after the Big Bang. But let's not stay too long in its vicinity. This ogre continues its exponential growth by increasing its mass by 60 suns each year. In the heavyweight category, we can also look at Tun 618, another hyperluminous quasar that measures 190 billion kilometers, meaning that it is 135,000 times larger than the Sun. Located at the border of the constellation, Cans Venetici, also called hunting dogs, and Coma Berenices, which translates as Bernice's hair, it is about 10 billion light years away from the Earth. Its particularity? In addition to being of monstrous, even unimaginable size, Tun 618 is reputed to be one of the brightest objects in the universe. Its luminosity is estimated at 140 trillion times that of the Sun, while its mass is estimated at about 66 billion solar masses. Remember that our Milky Way has a total of 64 billion solar masses. It is obviously a supermassive black hole whose accretion disk serves as a permanent pantry. Moreover, the materials orbiting close to it have a speed of nearly 7,000 kilometers per second, reflecting a very important gravitational force. Scientists estimate the age of the universe to be about 13.7 billion years, but since they have been able to study galaxies and more particularly black holes, a mystery remains. How did the largest black holes, whose mass is estimated to be millions, even billions of times that of the Sun, become so large in such a short time? While astronomers have observed the first star-producing galaxies, where supermassive black holes probably formed, they have not yet had the opportunity to link them unambiguously. At least until the discovery of a missing link, a growing black hole 
still covered with cosmic dust. This recent discovery allows them to consider that there is indeed an intermediate phase between star galaxies and supermassive black holes. To better understand this theory, let's go to the coveted object, an ancient black hole known as GNZ7Q, nestled in the heart of an early galaxy in one of the best probed areas of the distant universe, the Great Observatory's Origins Deep Survey North. Imagine the surprise of astronomers who, with the help of the Hubble Space Telescope of NASA and the European Space Agency, managed to point their lens at a celestial object that has a high probability of being a fast-growing black hole, more than 13 billion light-years away. This type of black hole, which has never before been encountered by scientists except in theories or computer simulations, could support the hypothesis that supermassive black holes originate in the dust-covered cores of starburst galaxies before expelling the surrounding gas and dust and emerging as extraordinarily bright quasars. These dusty galaxies and bright quasars, extremely rare, have nevertheless been detected at the beginning of the universe, and GNZ7Q seems to correspond in all points to the characteristics of a young quasar in transition phase. It provides scientists with an opportunity to understand the rapid growth of supermassive black holes in the early days of the universe. Its age has been determined by scientists who estimate that it existed barely 750 million years after the Big Bang. It is therefore a newly formed black hole at a time close to the first known supermassive black hole in the universe, which is located in a galaxy forming stars at a rate of 1,600 solar masses per year. While GNZ-7Q emits very weak X-ray wavelengths, it appears bright at UV wavelengths. This suggests that the core of the accretion disk that generates the X-rays is always darkened by the dusty core of the star-forming galaxy, while the outer part of its accretion disk releases UV light. I let you imagine the luminosity that will emerge from this quasar when the galactic dust will have faded, revealing the presence of this ogre until now invisible. Black holes are still far from having revealed all their secrets, and it is not without reason that they attract us more and more. After all, no one can say what happens at the center of a black hole. All we can say today is that the matter that crosses the point of no return is compressed to an infinitesimally small point, and that all conceptions of space-time collapse completely. This singularity has not yet found an explanation in the scientific community, even if several hypotheses are being studied, such as loop quantum gravitation or the existence of Gravistar. Quantum gravitation envisages that black holes, by dint of contracting, can bounce back. This is the theory of Planck's bouncing stars, in other words, a temporary phase between a compact star denser than a neutron star and a white hole, where the space-time variable would be reversed, offering an exit door to matter through a wormhole. A gravistar, whose name means gravitational vacuum star, would be a kind of bubble filled with vacuum and enveloped by a crust of matter so hard that everything that would pass by it would be sucked in by the star's gravity before crashing into its surface and finally merging with it in a large energy emission. What about you? Do you think that a black hole is only a gigantic side reel crusher? If not, are you ready to try the experiment? But beware! If you plan to let yourself be sucked into a black hole, no matter what happens, your trip 
will be a one-way trip. Worse, you could be stuck forever between two universes, completely disatomized. Even if you are lucky enough not to be disintegrated on contact with a hypothetical extremely hard shell and to be transported to the heart of a wormhole, your destination remains unknown. Do you feel ready to discover a possible parallel world with all the surprises it contains? But above all, are you ready to say goodbye to your world? Because no return to our current space-time will be possible.